big-time railroading has long been a hallmark in Lafayette, Indiana. Today, there's two Class 1 freight railroads, Amtrak, and a short line, so there's plenty of railroading action in the area. So pull up a chair, sit back and relax, and enjoy the great railroading action that Lafayette and West Central Indiana has to offer. Lafayette, Indiana is a medium-sized Midwestern city. Long a railroad town, Lafayette has been a favorite of train watchers over the years. In this program, we'll take a look at railroading in Lafayette, as well as the several lines that branch out of it. At one time, there were four railroads serving the city. The Wabash Detroit to Kansas City main line ran from the southeast to the northeast through the heart of town. The Monon's Chicago to Louisville main line ran from north to south, literally through downtown streets. On the southeast side of town, the Nickel Plates Muncie to Peoria line joined up with the New York Central Cincinnati to Chicago main line and ran alongside the Wabash River before crossing it and heading towards Illinois. This joint trackage was the busiest line in the area. The Wabash and Monon trackage, however, combined at times to almost paralyze downtown and in phases starting in 1994, a massive railroad relocation was opened that allowed successor railroads CSX and Norfolk Southern to eliminate all street running and crossings on their main lines through town. The CSX trackage down 5th Street and the NS trackage through town was removed and replaced with trackage that used the old New York Central and Nickel Plate corridor as well as a brand new right of way where the new train station is today. Perhaps the best place to start our visit to railroading in Lafayette is at the relocated Big Four station that is the centerpiece of the relocation. Located along the banks of the Wabash River, the station area has become a new landmark for the community. The old station serves as a banquet hall and meeting room, while downstairs is the city bus station and Amtrak terminal. A pedestrian bridge crosses the tracks to connect the waiting room with the passenger platform below. Continuing on west, the old Main Street Bridge over the Wabash River has been converted to a pedestrian bridge and directly connects the new train and bus station with Purdue University. The station was once located three blocks to the south at the right portion of the screen. The tracks to the right are part of the railroad relocation, while the track curving to the left is the old nickel plate in New York Central Line, now the short line Kankakee, Beaverville, and Southern. We're on board a westbound New York Central passenger train heading from Cincinnati to Chicago as rail fan Warren Scholl treats us to what this area looked like in the 1950s. As we curve towards the river, we can see the Big Four station in its old location, while an eastbound Hudson steam locomotive is serviced. the Wabash River on the double track through truss bridge. Today, the bridge is still there, but only single track for the KBNS short line. We can see just how much this area has changed since the 1950s. But just as it was then, the Big Four station today is still a great place to watch trains.
Today, passenger service is confined to CSX, where we see the northbound Kentucky Cardinal making its station stop. At the time this program was produced, Lafayette was served by two trains, the Cardinal running between Chicago and Washington, D.C. three days a week, and the Kentucky Cardinal between Louisville and Chicago the other four. The Kentucky Cardinal has since been discontinued and was replaced by the Indianapolis to Chicago Hoosier State running the same days. The train we are watching is mostly empty passenger cars coming from the Amtrak shops in Beach Grove near Indianapolis. Only the last two coaches are occupied by passengers. Once the passenger train departs, there's plenty of freight action with Norfolk Southern putting train after train through here with the occasional train on the CSX line. Many NS trains still have Conrail painted power left over from Norfolk Southern's purchase of roughly half of the Conrail system. The NS trackage through Lafayette is a double track island on a single track railroad. Here a westbound stops briefly so the engineer can go into the depot and visit the vending machine since the line ahead of him is blocked. The double track ends about a mile from here at Lafayette Junction which we will visit later. This train consists entirely of road railer trailers for NS's subsidiary Triple Crown. Trailers bound to or from locations like Kansas City, St. Louis, and Dallas pass through Lafayette.
traffic on CSX is not as heavy as it is on NS, but there are a dozen or so trains a day that use the former Monon. The old Monon route used to run south to Louisville, but is now abandoned south of Cloverdale. Most trains south of Lafayette connect with the old Peoria and Eastern at Crawfordsville and run to Indianapolis, although some go to Greencastle and connect with the former New York Central and head west. One can see many trains of auto racks passing through Lafayette on the NS, going to or from the auto plants in Detroit. This high-speed mainline is impressive, but to fully appreciate it, we need to look at what it replaced.
CSX's former Monon trackage down 5th Street was perhaps the most glaring example of the need for railroad relocation. In the last years of the old trackage, in addition to numerous CSX freights, two Amtrak trains rumbled down 5th Street, the tri-weekly Cardinal and the daily Hoosier State. Here we see the westbound Cardinal from Washington trundling down the middle of 5th Street. The other passenger train was the Indianapolis to Chicago Hoosier State. The Hoosier State is the train that Amtrak uses to connect its Beach Grove shops near Indianapolis to the rest of the Amtrak system. This train has had several incarnations and for a time ran to Louisville and was called the Kentucky Cardinal. It's always been a treat for the train watcher as unlike most Amtrak trains, its consist changes almost daily. As quaint as it was having passenger trains load and unload right in the middle of the street, for residents it was a pain as this was a mainline railroad and they were weary of long, heavy freight trains rumbling through town. Today, all that remains of the street running is this short section of track in front of the old Monon passenger station. The depot now serves as a community theater, and it and the little section of track is all that remains to remind people that 5th Street was once a busy mainline railroad.
The other component of the relocation was Norfolk Southern's former Wabash trackage. Although not as photogenic as the street running, it was by far the greater pain to the community, with numerous crossings posing a threat to both motorists and pedestrians. The difference between these scenes, shot in 1994, and today is striking. During the time this program was under production, this section of track near Lafayette Junction was nothing but a long grassy section, but as these signs attest, this area was to become a new housing development. Downtown, there is a small area that pays tribute to the old railroad, but soon this will be the only reminder of the old main line as the right-of-way will likely all be developed as the real estate in this area is quite valuable. Moving south, we're at Lafayette Junction where the New York Central and Nickel Plate once crossed the Wabash and Monon. In this 1994 view, we are standing on the NS's now abandoned Wabash track looking westbound. The crossing of the one-time Nickel Plate and New York Central is ahead. The train that we will see in the next shot would be crossing from left to right. Here we see another vintage view from a New York Central westbound as it crosses the Wabash at Lafayette Junction in the 1950s. By the time of the railroad relocation, this was merely a single track line that served as an interchange with the KBNS short line and no through trains operated over it. Today, the old right-of-way has a new life, as it is utilized all the way to the prior location of the Big Four Depot, as we saw a few minutes ago. Instead of diamonds, the relocation utilizes crossovers, with the Norfolk Southern Dispatcher controlling the entire interlocking system, including the CSX tracks. There are crossovers between NS and CSX on each side of the depot. Also here is where the new interchange with the KBNS branches off. As part of the relocation, a pedestrian bridge was built over the railroads, so Lafayette Junction is still a great place to see all the mainline trains that pass through Lafayette.
There's quite a bit of interesting railroading outside of the city. Northeast of Lafayette, NS's old Wabash line is single track and trains roar through the mostly flat Indiana countryside. On the northeast side of Lafayette is East Yard, where on one Sunday we saw a number of former Southern Railway High Hood GP38-2 diesels from Electromotive. These units were waiting for the business week and the local trains that they would be assigned to. Just south of the yard is the end of track where the once double track main line cut through town. Today, the new bypass loops to the west and then south, running right behind the old Monon shop complex. The shops are long closed, although CSX still uses the shop tracks as a tank car loading facility. We'll see the CSX yard on the other side of the shops in just a bit. Eastbound NS trains have to climb out of the Wabash River Valley, while westbounds race down the hill to join up with CSX and the alignment through the depot.
Down at the bottom of the hill is the CSX yard. The part of the S-curve where our camera is located is on the relocated alignment as this is where the Norfolk Southern trains begin to parallel the CSX line. This eastbound is a run through from the Union Pacific. Some UP trains for eastern destinations diverge off of the UP to the Norfolk Southern at Sydney, Illinois. Moving on to our next route, we'll visit CSX's former Monon mainline to Chicago. Just north of Lafayette, trains on the Monon subdivision cross the Wabash River on this through truss bridge. This northbound is run by the Toledo, Peoria, and Western. TPNW interchanges with CSX in Lafayette, and here we see the TPNW returning north to home rails at Reynolds.
The old Monon runs through several Indiana small towns, such as Brookston, that evoke memories of a slower time. Smithson is about as small as they get. This is the entire town, two buildings. The old junction town of Monon is the reason that the Chicago, Indianapolis, and Louisville became known as, and eventually named, the Monon. Today, there is a small park with a display honoring the old railroad. This train originated at CSX's Avon Yard in Indianapolis and is returning BNSF power to Chicago. To our left is the former Monon Indianapolis branch, and to the right is the one-time main to Louisville.
This train is now heading northwest to Chicago. Ahead of us is the Louisville line, and behind us is the mostly abandoned Monon, Michigan City branch. We'll rejoin the old Monon shortly south of Lafayette. We're just south of Lafayette Junction in 1994, where we see an eastbound Norfolk Southern train on the former Wabash to the right, while on the left, the former nickel plate line from Muncie comes in. This was once joint trackage with the New York Central. The central trackage to Indianapolis is now abandoned, but NS still uses the former nickel plate line. Here in Frankfurt, we see an NS train being yarded. This is a chance to see one of those increasingly rare high hood units in action. In addition to the old coaling tower, there's also the nickel plate roundhouse here. Frankfurt was once a busy nickel plate town with the line to Lafayette and Peoria, as well as the line to St. Louis. The St. Louis line is gone as St. Louis trains go to Lafayette, then west on the former Wabash, so activity in Frankfurt is greatly diminished from what it once was. We're southwest of Lafayette along the NS in the small town of Attica. Here the former Wabash line crosses its namesake river.
The route is mostly single track and meets are quite common. Here this eastbound is pulling into the siding at Attica. The siding east of Attica is Riverside, where we see another meet.
on the south side of Lafayette is an over-under where NS's old Wabash line crosses CSX's old Monon Louisville Main. To our left on the NS is Kansas City and to the right is Lafayette and ultimately Detroit. Behind us on CSX is what is left of the Louisville Main, which is now essentially aligned to Indianapolis. Ahead of us is the Lafayette Depot area and ultimately Chicago. Let's just sit back and watch the parade of trains.
We're about 16 miles south of Lafayette on CSX's old Monon line. We're in an area from just north of the town of Romney to Crawfordsville. There are several old semaphore signals. This is the northernmost semaphore a few miles north of Romney. The greatest stand of blades are between Romney and Linden. Here we see a southbound splitting the signals in Romney where the two semaphore sets are within sight of each other. In the next scene, we'll see Amtrak's westbound Cardinal passing these same signals as it heads towards Lafayette and Chicago. Here we see a clear block, followed by approach, and then the blades signal the arrival of the train.
We'll see the same train again, this time from the set of blades just north of Romney. Again, we see the progression of the various aspects of the signals. The next town south of Romney is Linden, where the nickel plate St. Louis line once crossed the Monon. One can see the old depot and displays pertaining to both railroads. The nickel plate St. Louis line is abandoned, with only the display track on the roadbed today. But the old Monon line still sees CSX and Amtrak trains. Just north of Linden are two more semaphore sets within sight of each other.
These signals, seen also in the previous scene, are just north of Ames where most CSX traffic diverges onto the old Peoria and Eastern and goes to Indianapolis. Some trains do use the old Monon as far south as Greencastle and Cloverdale, but this is as far as the old semaphores go, so this concludes our visit to the old Monon. The last line on our visit to the Lafayette area is the Kankakee, Beaverville and Southern, which operates portions of both the old New York Central and Nickel Plate lines out of Lafayette. Templeton, Indiana, where we see a grain train heading southeast towards Lafayette, curving from the former New York Central trackage onto the former joint trackage, which from here to Lafayette Junction was actually owned by the nickel plate. It's hard to imagine that this was once double track with the manned interlocking here. Sometimes goofs can be made in train chasing. In this scene, Giving in to the urge to get ahead of the train caused something to be missed, which we will see in the next shot.
Alco locomotives number 308 and RSD20 and 321 and RS3 rebuilt into an RS11 were a surprise pushing on the rear. These locomotives were running out their final months of service on the KBNS. The KBNS was once all Alco, but these two were the only two operating by the fall of 2003, and they were stored in January 2004. The KBNS has a pretty stiff grade leaving Lafayette and climbing out of the Wabash River Valley. Alas, though, the Alco's extra power wasn't needed to pull this mammoth train. We're back at the Big Four Depot in Lafayette where we see some late afternoon action. The depot area provides a variety of interesting accessible photo locations. Moving a few blocks back to Lafayette Junction, we see a poor CSX train that has only made it this far before the crew ran afoul of the hours of service law. Norfolk Southern was doing track work and had the entire corridor closed all day long, and the CSX train made it less than a mile.
At last a new crew is on and the track work is complete and the train gets on its way. It's 11 p.m. and we're back at the depot to see one more train, the arrival of Amtrak's eastbound Cardinal from Chicago to Washington, D.C. Lafayette is a popular stop for both the Cardinal and Hoosier State, with many Purdue students using the train. Of course, one train a day is a far cry from the level of service that Lafayette once enjoyed, with the New York Central, Wabash, Monon, and Nickel Plate all offering travel to a variety of places. As we've seen in the last hour and a half, much change has taken place in the Lafayette railroad scene, but this town is still a great place to watch trains and it no doubt will be well into the future.